Hello everybody, this is Score Chaser, and this is going to be awesome. It's especially going to be awesome for me. Back in 2016, Nintendo tugged at the nostalgic heartstrings of its fans and announced the release of the NES Classic Edition, packed in with 30 classic NES games, and everyone got so excited and they hyped it up. So many ads, so many videos, and then it launched in November of that same year, and you know how the rest of that story goes. I was finally able to procure one for myself. Um, back when this launched, the day that it launched, I woke up extremely early to go to a Target. Um, and there was a line of about 14 people, and there was a sales associate at the very front of the line who informed me that there were only 14 available and there were 14 people in line. Um, so I immediately went online, Toys R Us, Walmart, Target, all over the place, and it was the same sad story no matter where I clicked. This was sold out. Unless you happen to go on eBay and decide to pay a high scalped price of about four to five hundred dollars. Um, not to mention all the knockoffs that came onto the market soon after. I stayed resolute and decided to wait, and my waiting paid off because earlier this year Nintendo re released it, and I was finally able to get one at price. And I decided that it would be great to share this moment with the gaming public at large because this is a huge deal for me. Um, but I figured that it would be great to show everybody what also came entirely with the original Nintendo Entertainment System. This unfortunately is not the one that I received back in 1990 when I first got the NES. Um, but this still holds a special place in my heart. Um, but I thought it would be great to show you what came with the original NES and what came with its little teeny cousin. So I thought I would start with the NES, so that way we can do a comparison. Alright, let's get started with this. Now since we're going to be going down a trip in memory lane, I thought it would be super awesome to be able to have something that reminds me of these days bygone past. Something that was also really important to me along with video games. Ecto Cooler. Um, if you don't know what Ecto Cooler was, it was released by High C in the early 90s to coincide with the Ghostbusters cartoon, The Real Ghostbusters. Um, it was basically a tangerine flavored drink that was colored green. Um, this was released during the uh, all-female cast Ghostbusters movie uh, a few years back, and uh, I stocked up. <laughs> all right, so cheers to all of you. To the 90s. Oh man, that is diabetes. All right, now I had got this off of eBay much earlier this year, um, got a great deal on it, and I love this system. I played with it for a while, and uh, decided to put it back to keep it in as good condition as I can. Um, the box is a little bit torn up, but it's still awesome that I have the box. The first thing that I saw upon opening this was in the flap right here. You can see that someone wrote what they called the Contra Password. Now, <laughs> This is something that every single gamer knows, or at least every single retro gamer that had their merit. Up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, be a start. I hear a lot of people say select, which is inaccurate, but that's only if you want to have two players with 30 lives each. Now, the system itself came in the box, which was protected by styrofoam. This styrofoam is a little on the damaged side, but it, the fact that it's still there and mostly intact is excellent. Um, it does have one big chunk taken out of it right there, but other than that, it's still in really good condition. Now, the system itself came wrapped in a plastic bag. That, be careful, because this is a choking hazard. So we will keep this away from our mouths as not to cover ourselves and suffocate. 
the original NES. Um, this one is not yellowed, which I'm really happy for because a lot of the plastic of the original NES is they tend to get more of a yellow sheen around the areas that are white. Um, this model has a chip taken out right there, but it's still in great condition. It still works. I've cleaned this out thoroughly, and it works as if it was factory fresh. So there itself is the console, the mother of all video game consoles in my opinion. Also we got inserts. These are extremely rare to come with that has an NES that's pretty much complete in box. And in here we have the instructions for the NES Zapper. An advertisement for Nintendo Power. Um, Nintendo Power is what we had before the internet to rely on uh, game walkthroughs and cheats. Um, either that or it was word of mouth. That was all we had. The instructions itself for how to set up your NES control deck. Um, basically how to hook it up to your CRT TV. This was what... Uh, I, I nearly lost my stuff over when I saw this. It also came with a poster. Um, the poster is in super minty condition. Um, I'm not going to unfold it because I really don't have the room to display what it looked like. But in a future video, I am going to show what these looked like on both sides because I want to get these framed. It's a very, very integral part of our history. Uh, the warranty for the Nintendo Entertainment System. And... A warning to not use this with a front projection TV because back then you would burn the, the screen under your TV and that was it. Now, the original NES also came with two controllers. I currently have one out right now. your standard fare we got our d-pad and we have our start and select buttons and we have our bna um it's gonna be neat to be able to compare this to the actual controller that comes with the nes classic to see how the two hold up next to each other so i'm gonna put this to the side we have our brick power source which is used to power on our nes and we have video connector cables, and the dreaded coaxial cable. Um, a lot of you are familiar with the horrid picture that we would get from uh, using coaxial cables. Something I really don't miss. And this right here is the NES Zapper. I only ever had two games that were compatible with this, Duck Hunt and Hogan's Alley, and they were both really fun games. The How this works is that um, it's called a light gun and it doesn't actually fire a light but what it does is that when you pull the trigger that is the sound of my childhood when you pull the trigger it sends a signal to the NES that turns the entire screen black except for targets on the screen which would be outlined in white boxes now what the lens in the gun does is it actually detects whether or not you were aiming at those white blocks on the screen and will determine whether or not you hit it. So this actually doesn't fire anything, it more or less sees where you're aiming. Um, man, that still feels good after all these years. Nothing like it. But the shame, uh, the shame with this is that I cannot use my zapper because I do not have a CRT TV currently and for whatever reason LCD screens do not work with the zapper. But I can still play with it. Let's get the styrofoam out of the way, and we shall prep for unboxing the NES Classic Edition. Now, for the reason why I decided to film this video, the NES Classic, um, let's just get right to this thing, because I haven't opened it yet, I got it yesterday, and I've just been dying to open it, but I wanted to have my reaction to seeing it being fresh, so you can share this with me. Alright, this is been two years in the waiting, two years in the making. So let's break the seal together, shall we? 
Oh, that is awesome. Right there. Now you're playing with power. That is just, uh, because they used to say that all the time in the ads. Now you're playing with power. And with the Super Nintendo, now you're playing with super power. Uh, with the 64, they didn't have... Well, they had get in or get out. That was it. Um, not as strong of a, a selling point to me. Okay, we have a poster. Again, I don't have the room to unfold this, so I do apologize, but I will be doing a video of uh, these posters when I get them framed. But it appears to be that it is an advertisement for um, the original Nintendo, from what it appears. So we'll just put that over to the side and keep it nice and crisp in its little package. Oh, here's the moment that I have been waiting months and months to do. This is the console itself, wrapped up nice and snug within a small protective sheet. Oh, that is absolutely gorgeous. Look at that. And you see the way that I'm holding it right now? That was the only way that I could see it. It was in thumbnails and videos of people holding it so effeminately like this. And to tell the truth, those thumbnails irritated me so badly that they were just holding it like that, teasing me. But, oh man, it is so beautiful to be able to actually be holding one of these. It looks just like the original NES, save for the fact that it has HDMI written on the back, and the ports are different. Um, but man, power button's nice and clicky. Uh, the reset button's clicky, which the original is not. Now, I know that every single unboxer or YouTuber that has done an unboxing of the NES Classic has done this, but you know what? I'm going to do it too because I want to. This is the NES. Ta-da! And this is its mini-me. Looks like a baby riding on its mama, doesn't it? Um, the colorization is a little lighter. Um, I can't really comment on that to say if it's really authentic or not because this is an over 30 year old system. So, you know, it uh, probably looked like this at some point, but uh, for me, there's no real way of telling. Um, the font for Nintendo is a little lighter than it is on the actual console, but the ink for the port numbers is about the same shade, so they got that. Um, all right, let's see what else is in the box. It's like Christmas in July. Ooh. We also have in the box, we have cardboard protecting the NES Classic controller. Now, this is something that I am kind of worried about because for whatever reason, companies, including Nintendo, just don't know how to make a proper D-pad anymore. Um, they were just all horrible. But uh, this, it feels a little bit flatter than the original, but otherwise it looks great. The start and select buttons are a little more mushier, and the B and A buttons function just fine. But that D-pad kind of has me a little bit worried, but I'll have to test that out. Thankfully though, if it doesn't work, I have on the way from eBay a Hyperkin NES to NES Classic controller converter, so I'll be able to use my old faithful. They're about the same size, same width. But yeah, that D-pad, that just, that kind of bothers me. But this D-pad is awesome, so I'll be able to use the real thing, and I might just hold off to actually test the system and just keep this in the box to keep it all nice and pretty. Um, because what also the NES Classic released, uh, getting a second controller was expensive as all get out. It was insane. Everything about the release of the first one was just such a disaster. And also in the box underneath the cardboard for the controller, we have the USB power adapter, USB cord, and HDMI. You've seen HDMI cables and USB power sources so many times that you probably got a million in your own home. But that's basically everything that came with it. And I am just so excited to have this. It's, um, even though I actually have an NES, it's just the package that they gave with it, the 
the user interface, everything about it was just so awesome and I wanted to have one for my collection and now I do. Um, and I paid a fair price, which is what makes me even happier. But that's, that's it. Uh, thank you for watching and remember, life stinks, play games.